Hi, my name is Jason Tabot, and I'm the inventor of the Pacifeeder hands-free baby bottle. In this video, we'll be comparing the Pody and the Pacifeeder. Both of these products have been on the market for almost 20 years. In fact, Pacifeeder came out in December of 1998, which means next month we celebrate our 20 year anniversary. Not a lot has changed in the past 20 years except for colors and changes of plastic. In this video, we're gonna talk about the differences between the two and what separates the Pacifeeder from the Pody. Okay, let's go ahead and unpackage both products. Start with Pody. So there's the bottle. And inside here, I've already opened this up. So we have the bottle, BPA free bottle. We have one long tube, one short tube, tube, and then we have the instructions. If you can see that. There's a little cleaning brush to help you clean the tubing. And then your various connectors for the tubing that allow you to connect it to the bottle. And let's go ahead and set that aside. Go ahead and unpackage the pass feeder. Pass the feeder comes fully assembled. So it comes with a cleaning brush as well. And the reason it comes fully assembled is so that when you take it apart, you know how to put it together again. Very, very easy. Let's lay that down. And there's an instruction in there. And you'll see our instructions are fairly in depth. So front and back. And this is 20 years worth of receiving comments and questions. And we've incorporated all of the potential pitfalls or concerns about assembly and cleaning into the instructions. Let's go ahead and assemble the Pody. So first you're gonna take the long tube which attaches to the nipple. You'll connect it to this adapter. Then you'll screw it on to your nipple. So you can use any nipple with this. Now you wanna connect it to the top of the bottle. And you do that by putting this on first. Then you put on the short tube. And there you have your fully assembled Pody. Okay, and I've taken apart the passive feeder to be fair, and we're gonna go ahead and put that back together. So here's the Velcro strap, and we'll get into what that does. You'll notice it's a two-way strap. There's two pieces of Velcro that attach to each other. And you'll notice that's rotating, okay? So there's the bottle. Now, we need to go ahead and connect the nipple to our adapter, which has a valve in it. We'll get to that in a minute. You just snap it into place. The long tube. Now this goes inside this corrugated housing we call the flex guard. A little trick to putting that in, you just quickly rotate it as you put it through, that's it. So what you'll do is you'll leave one end out and connect it. Now what we're gonna do is connect the top part. Now we have a built-in flushing disc. There's a silicone washer in here that connects to a standard faucet that allows you to flush the tubing and the valve out. And we just leave that in there. It comes out for cleaning, okay? Now what we'll do is squeeze the end here until it pops out. And we'll connect that. And then our short tube. And there you have a fully assembled pass feeder. Okay, let's talk about the materials of these two products. Both bottles are polypropylene. That is a BPA-free material. 
Both of the nipples are also BPA-free and PVC-free. This is silicone, this is a thermoplastic elastomer, FDA-compliant, food grade. However, and we just bought this, the Pody is using PVC tubing. It's a very inexpensive tube, and it's been banned for use with children's pacifiers. That's why we switched from PVC years ago to something different. So we just purchased this. If they're using a different material, then this must be old stock because this was just purchased a week ago. The tubing that the pacifier uses, it's proprietary, custom made. It acts like silicone, uh, much more expensive, I think four times the price of PVC. And this is coming directly out of Ireland. Nothing with the pacifier has any lead, bisphenol A, or PVC, what we also would call phthalates, which are found in PVC materials. You can make your own decision. You can look online about PVC and baby products. I don't think you're going to hear good news about that. So that is a concern I have. I'm not sure if they've changed it and if they're approved to use PVC, but we wouldn't. Okay, let's start off with some of the basic features and benefits. You'll notice one thing right away, that Velcro strap. The entire reason of buying a hands-free baby bottle is so that you don't have to hold the bottle while they're in a car seat, a stroller, an infant carrier, whenever travel is involved. And that was the entire purpose of me inventing this back in actually 1995. So if this is in between the child's legs or sitting on the side of their car seat, they're going to drop this. It's going to fall. They can throw this at mom or dad while they're driving. Here, you can actually attach this to any horizontal or vertical member. So this will stay really close to the child, and all they've got to do is bring the nipple up to their mouth and begin drinking. So this Velcro strap is the deal breaker. There's just no way that this is going to hold up. If you're in Disneyland and this thing gets thrown off the stroller, the nipple's dirty now, and now you gotta go wash it, okay? This can be tossed at any time. It can fall at any time. Children play with things. That can't happen with this. Once it's full of liquid, by the way, it balances, okay? And it rotates in whatever direction the child is pulling on this nipple so that it moves freely. So the Velcro strap is a big deal. And if that was the only feature that I showed, I think that would almost be enough, but there's a lot more. Okay, let's talk about probably one of the most important features. I know Velcro is a big deal, but this is a, a big deal as well. So let's take this apart here. With the pacifier, we have this adapter and we have a valve in here that opens when the baby sucks and then it closes, snaps right back. It has a medical grade stainless steel spring inside there. This is a medical grade valve. This valve alone probably costs more than this entire package. Okay? But this is what prevents air ingestion, leaking, siphoning. So what happens is as the baby begins to draw liquid up, liquid goes up and fills up the nipple and it stays in there. The liquid can't go back down. Okay. And if you hold this down like this, this is called siphoning. When we lower the end point of the tube below the liquid level, siphoning physics will cause siphoning to occur. It will not leak either. Okay, so if the baby stops drinking and then lets it drop, it's not going to leak. And when they bring it back up again, it's going to be full of liquid. So they just resume where they left off. However, with this, there's no valve. Let's take this apart. I'll show you. There's no valve in here. Okay. There's just a, a small little hole there, okay? 
and there's no valve in here. There's nothing. Okay, there's no valve here. Let's take this apart. I don't know if you can see that, but there's no valve in there. That's just a straight pass-through. These are two little barbs that pass through. So they're relying on the nipple to be the valve. Okay, they have a cross-cut nipple here, which is fine. And that opens up as the baby drinks, and then it closes. So that kind of acts like a valve. But the problem is if the baby starts biting on this, and they're, as they're sucking on it, they're constantly opening and closing that valve, and then they end up having all these air gaps in the tubing. Now, if you use your own nipple, and you use, let's say, a low, medium, or fast flow nipple with a just standard hole in it, it will constantly allow milk to go back down. It will leak, it will siphon. There is no way to control that. I promise you that. Okay, so this reduces, excuse me, this reduces air ingestion and prevents air gaps. In other words, this stays full until the, body, the bottle's empty. Okay, that can't happen with the podi. Okay, let's talk about the tubing. Another real obvious feature you're gonna see is our flex guard. So when we were filming this back almost 20 years ago for an infomercial, it was like this, it was bare. And when the baby was pulling on it, it disconnected, liquid went flying all over the place. So liquid will get all over the car seat, their stroller, their clothes, your car, your furniture, it doesn't matter. This will disconnect and little hands love to discover things. They love to play. They don't know what they're doing. And so we had to figure out a solution very quickly. So I developed the flex guard, which is an outer shield, essentially. Liquid doesn't actually flow inside this corrugated tubing. It flows through this, okay? But if the baby is playing and does this, what are they doing? They're just grabbing this little accordion. They can't disconnect it. The baby would have to do this and hold it there, then grab this intentionally and pull really hard. Well, they're not going to do that. Okay. Now, another purpose of our flex guard that we found is that over time, these hoses can kink. Okay. And they start getting used and they become more and more flexible and they can kink. And this prevents it from ever getting kinked. Even if you did that, you can't kink the inside because it's still a decent radius because of the, the diameter of the tubing. So our flex guard prevents the entire product from being disconnected while you're driving or traveling and having liquid all over the place and having to stop and reassemble and clean up that mess. Next, we're going to talk about the inner tube. What's the big deal? Very big deal. So let's look at the Podi's inner tube. If you'll notice the end of this, it's a perfect right angle, it's a flat cut. You might be able to see that better against that surface. Well, what's happening here is when this tube touches the bottom of the bottle, and it did it right then and there, I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's actually sucking up right against the bottom of the bottle. So when the baby is drinking, Oftentimes, a vacuum is created and they're getting absolutely nothing. And then they just kick it out of their mouth and they start to cry. We solved that problem. So the pass feeder has a V-cut, and you can probably see better with this black backer here, but it's shaped like a, a V. So no matter where it's placed at the bottom of the bottle, it'll always be able to draw liquid. I don't know if you can see that, but no matter what, no matter the position, it's always going to draw liquid. Another feature of the passive feeder is its ability to bring liquid all the way to the nipple without mom having to actually put the nipple in her mouth and prime it. Because you really don't want to suck on this and then give it to your baby. That's what you have to do with the podi. The podi doesn't, the podi doesn't have a priming system, otherwise I'd show if it does. Pass the feeder, simply you just, with clean fingers, which is better than a dirty mouth, you simply squeeze 
and you can see the effect. And we're getting pretty much full there. So you'll notice that that is full of liquid now. Notice how it's not going down. And I've got a white cloth here, and it's not leaking either. Again, won't go back down, and it's not going to leak. I can't do that with the pody. Next, let's talk about cleaning. So both products come with a cleaning brush. So you can take apart the pody, and you can use the cleaning brush to clean all the tubes and boil the nipple. So this is actually very easy to clean. Passive feeder is unique. It has a valve, and you can't take apart the valve. So how do we clean that? Well, you can clean the nipple like you would any other nipple. You can boil this. You can wash it by hand. You can put a little brush in there as well. So you would clean that as usual. The short tube, you, the short tube you can also clean with the brush. Okay. Now, you can also clean the long tube with the brush, but before you do that, how do you clean that valve out? And what if you left that sitting overnight and it coagulated or it hardened? Okay, well, you could boil this for 30 seconds, and then reattach it. And then this part right here, you'll notice there's this little silicone washer. This is meant to put up against a standard faucet, and you hold it up against the faucet while you gently turn on the faucet, and it will flush out this entire system. It'll open up that valve and clean it out. And once you're done flushing it, you just simply pull the tip up, and everything drains out, and then you just take everything apart and let it air dry. One other point I'd like to make is that because air has to go back in as liquid is coming out to prevent vacuum buildup, both the pass feeder and the pody have built-in air vents on the top of the bottle here. They're too small to show on video, but I wanted to make that point. Pass the feeder can be ordered online in a white cap, green, or orange. Pody comes in just white. You can also order a three pack of just the baby bottles themselves with nipples. And I believe our three pack is one of the lowest prices on the internet. Okay, you're probably wondering why I didn't prime the pody like I did the pacifier to prove that the pody can't prime the nipple. Well, I'm about to. So, I'll squeeze the nipple, put my finger on the top and let go. See how it pulls up? But every time it happens, it goes right back down. No matter what, I'll squeeze this nipple all day long. The process is squeeze nipple, hold hole, let go. Squeeze nipple, hold hole, let go. You can't do it. But we're getting close. Look at that. We try really hard. Every time you squeeze it, it lets air back in and goes down. So, can't be done. That's a side by side comparison of the pody. If you have any questions about the passive feeder, please inquire at SavvyBaby.com. That's S-A-V-I-B-A-B-Y.com. Thanks for watching.